end for you and your family and then you see how little chain never be overemphasized yeah. thank you so much for watching my video remember to subscribe like comment like and share hi besties this is Tao Didi TV your lady today I have this news to bring to you guys that has been flying around in all the um, news media in United Kingdom the Bishop of Canterbury in the United Kingdom the most Reverend Justin Welby has stood down from his office after a damning report into his handling of the worst abuse scandal in the history of the Church of England. Okay. Someone may ask, what is the duty of the Archbishop of Canterbury in the United Kingdom? The Archbishop of Canterbury is the most senior leader of the Church of England below the King, who is his supreme, supreme governor. They preside over the Church and his work in the southern two thirds two of England, while the Archbishop of York leads in the north. The Archbishop of Canterbury also holds a unique position in the worldwide Anglican Church as spiritual leader. Along with 106 other bishops, the Archbishops determine the direction of the Church and make decisions on its role in the society. They also chair the General Synod, which is the Church's ruling committee made up of the bishops, the clergy, and the laity that meets two, twice. They meet twice a year to discuss church law. Archbishop of Canterbury sits in the House of Lords as the Lord's spiritual, acts as patron for various organizations and charities, and is in charge of the Anglican chaplains for each of the British armed forces. So that is his major role. Now, let me bring to you what I came across in Sky News regarding this issue. The Archbishop, the Archbishop who took the role in 2013 says unquote he must take personal and institutional responsibility after a damning review into the church of england's handling of abuse cases but what did the report say and what happens now it was an independent review into the church's handling of a man called john smith qc a barrister and evangelical christian who abused as many as 130 boys and young men at Christian summer camps. He is believed to be the most prolific serial abuser associated with the Church of England, having targeted victims in the United Kingdom and Africa over five decades. A Channel 4 documentary broadcast in 2017 shed light on the abuse and Hampshire police opened an investigation shortly after, but Smith died in Cape Town at the age of 75 in 2018 before any charges were brought against him. Now, let me read out the resignation letter from Mr. Welby. This is Mr. Welby's full resignation letter. Having sought the gracious permission of His Majesty the King, I have decided to resign as Archbishop of Canterbury. The marking review has exposed the long-maintained conspiracy of silence about the heinous 
abuses of John Smith. When I was informed in 2013 and told that police has been notified, I believed wrongly that an appropriate re resolution would follow. It added that from 2013, the Church of England knew at the highest level about the abuse that took place because a victim came forward but did not act on the information. It says Mr. Webley could and should have formally reported the abuse to authorities in 2013 when he first became aware, but that he and other senior vicar, sorry, figures at the church showed a distinct lack of curiosity and minimized the matter. They said if Mr. Webley had told the police at the time, Smith may have been brought to justice a decade ago. The report also looked at whether Mr. Webley, sorry, whether Mr. Welby could have had knowledge of the abuse prior to 2013 because he knew Smith, he knew Smith from attending Ewing Christian camps at the time, at that time as him. The review said there was nothing to suggest this went beyond a passing relationship and that there, there, there was no evidence he had maintained and significant, uh, any significant contact with the barrister in later years. But he did say Mr. Welby was overheard by a contributor to the review having a grave conversation with Reverend Mark Rustin about Smith while logging with him in the 1978. Mr. Welby has said he does not recall this conversation and that he was not aware of the actions of Smith at that time. Mr. Welby has admitted that in early 1981, a reverend, a reverend called Peter Satin told him that one of the boys at his church has spoken to him about Smith. Mr. Satin warned Mr. Welby that Smith was not a good man and to stay away from him. Mr. Welby told the review that the warning was vague and that there was no indication given to the abuses which later came to light. Allegations were first made against Smith in 1982 and the independent review published last week found that Smith's abuse was covered up within the Church of England for years. The barrister moved to Zimbabwe in 1984 and set up similar evangelical camps there. The review said Smith was able to move to Africa from England while a small number of church officers knew of the abuse and failed to take the steps necessary to prevent further abuse occurring, allowing him to continue abusing victims abroad. It is very clear that I must take personal and institutional responsibility for the long and re-traumatizing period between 2013 and 2024. It's my duty to honor my constitutional and church re responsibilities so so exact timings will be decided once a review of necessary obligations has been completed including those in england and in the anglican communion i hope this decision makes clear how seriously the church of england understands the need for change and our profound commitment to creating a safer church as I step down, I do so in sorrow with all victims and survivors of abuse. The last few days have renewed my long felt and profound sense of shame at the historic safeguarding. Failures of the Church of England. For nearly 12 years, I have struggled to introduce improvements. It is for others to judge what has been done. In the meantime, I will follow through on my commitment to meet victims 
I will delegate all my current responsibilities for safeguarding until the necessary risk assessment process is complete. I ask everyone to keep my wife, Caroline, and my children in their prayers. They've been my most important support throughout my ministry, and I am eternally grateful for their sacrifice. Caroline led the Spouses program during the Lambert Conference and has traveled tirelessly in areas of conflict, supporting the most vulnerable, the women and those who care for them locally. I believe that stepping aside is in the best interest of the Church of England, which I dearly love and which I've been honored to serve. I pray that this decision points us back towards the love. This is a lesson for everyone. No one is above the law. No one is above the law. I will keep you guys posted whatever that happens after the resignation of our Lord Bishop of Canterbury. Thank you and watch this video. Comment, like, and share.